You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are those of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Sergeant? Yes, soldier. Can I ask you something? Go ahead, son. Well, it's whiskey you want. Well, I don't have none. Not for days now. It's long gone. No, that's not it, sir. Oh. I thought... Well, I, I thought maybe you wanted something for the pain. Your arm. You'd best change that bandage. I don't have anything, Sergeant, except my uniform, and there ain't much of that left. Here. Take my ketchup. Oh, no, I, I can't. I sure can't. you, sure you can. Come on now. Get that sling off. Make yourself a new dressing. You need it in the heat. Thank you kindly, sir. Go ahead and sit. You know, if you like. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. I got to keep moving. Why? There's no hurry. Not anymore. Well, if you can walk on that crutch, I figure I can as much on these two feet. Besides, I got a long way to go. How far, soldier? Alabama. I made it to be 600 miles. My folks will be waiting. Stop now, I might not get there at all. Now you'll get there all right. We all will, one way or the other. Because we have to. No place else to go. Yes, sir. Going home. That's what I wanted to ask. You know the date today? I'm sorry, son. I lost track. I don't know, still April or thereabouts. Hey, Willie. That you? You know that boy? Sure I do. Sounds like Willie from Birmingham. We was together at Appomattox. Uh, you go on ahead. I gotta take it slow for a while. Much obliged. See you tonight, sir, when we make camp. Luck to you, son. God be with you. This is the year of our Lord, 1865, and these are Confederate soldiers not long after General Robert E. Lee handed over his sword to General Grant. Lee's troops have been released from duty, and for most that means traveling on foot, carrying with them the last vestiges of dignity and defeat. They walk these roads by the thousands, by the tens of thousands, with one goal in mind, to get home. They survived a war that cost more than a million lives, and those left are the walking wounded, bandaged, dirty, bearded, and exhausted, moving past burned-out homes in a burned-out land that now relinquishes a burned-out cause. But in a moment, the dusty road that began at Fort Sumter, South Carolina, and ended at Appomattox, littered with the residue of broken battles and shattered dreams, will terminate in a strange province that knows neither north nor south, a place we call the Twilight Zone. And now, back to the Twilight Zone with The Passers-By, starring Morgan Brittany, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Miss? Yes? I was wondering. Come closer to the porch so I can see you. Mind if I take some of your water, miss? The canteen's run dry. Please. The well's just there. Have all you like. Thank you kindly. I <sighs> oh, don't know how good that tastes. I see by your uniform. Sergeant, isn't it? Well, I was. Don't know that it matters much now. Beautiful house you have here. It was. We used to call it our mansion. Beautiful tree, too. The oak here, strong. The kind that lasts. Yes, it survived. It was here before the house was built. And now it's the only one left. War claims a lot of victims, different kinds, men, 
Animals. God's own beauty. And mind if I if I sit here a spell? Not at all. It's nice to talk to someone. I feel as if I haven't had a conversation in years. What if I strum a guitar a bit? You have a guitar? Carried it all through the war. Would it bother you? Oh, it would be lovely. My husband used to play a guitar. Did he? Oh, he played so well. He's where, ma'am? He was killed at Yellow Tavern with General Stewart. I'm sorry. You have a wife back home? No kin at all. It was just my father, but he died the first year of the war. I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. It's been a while now. I mean the crutch. I, I didn't see it. You've lost your leg. No matter, ma'am. Didn't exactly lose it anyway. I know just where they buried it. Outside of Chickamauga. It must be... It must be hard walking for you. Do you have a long way to go? Why, I guess I do. Kind of lost track. Have you been on the road long? <laughs> Reckon I have. Since the beginning of time. Leastways, that's the way it seems. I don't quite remember when I wasn't moving down the road someplace. Like all those men passing by day and night. Oh, I've got plenty of company. But it's different now. There isn't anything in the world sadder than a defeated army crawling home. And how different it was when they marched off. Brand new gray and gold braid and a thousand flags. With trumpets and drums. Nothing but trumpets and drums. I thought it sounded so wonderful. I remember. <laughs> Gonna lick the Yanks in a month. That's what they said. In a month. How wrong they were. And we stood by in our summer dresses and cheered them on and threw flowers and felt so grand. Just a few tears. Not many. Because we were so sure they'd all be coming back just as they left. And how wrong we were. Oh, my. Anything wrong? I'm feeling a, a little dizzy. Ma'am, please sit down. I don't think you're well. It's the fever. But I'm on the mend now. It, it just left me weak, that's all. Just a little weak. And still they come. Morning and night, night and morning. The young ones and the old ones. And oh, oh, how tired they look. How worn. Are there hundreds of them or thousands of them? More than that. And wouldn't you think... Wouldn't you think there were so many, my... My Judd? Ma'am? Sergeant, do me a favor. Play your guitar real loud. I mean real loud. Drown me out. I'm so sick to death of hearing my own crying and the sound of footsteps on the road. Please, play it loud so I can hear music. Please, Sergeant. My pleasure. <laughs> Charlie? Charlie Constable, is that you? Charlie, it's Lavinia. Charlie, we thought you'd been killed. That's what everyone said. They said you'd been shot in the head at Gettysburg. Afternoon, ma'am. Sorry to disturb you, ma'am. Good day to you. It's Charlie I want to talk to. Can't you hear me? Couldn't you stop a minute, Charlie? Couldn't you stop a minute and talk? I'm so glad you're all right. I'm so glad you got back. I'm almost there, Lavinia. Almost there. I don't think I'll need all this weight. You can store my blanket roll for me, but I gotta keep moving. I'm almost there now, you see. I'll be there by nightfall. Oh, Charlie. Your wife will be so glad to see you. So very, very glad. Goodbye, Lavinia. Will you give Susan my best, Charlie? Tell her when you get settled to please come over. Would you do that for me? 
Well, I'll expect she'll want to keep you to herself for some time. I know if it would Judd. If it would Judd come home to me, I'd, I'd hold him close. So close, Charlie. And I'd not let him leave again. I'm sure, Lavinia. Charlie, wait. You might need some of your bedroll. The Yanks took most of the blankets. Susan might have use for yours. Well, I I I'll keep it for you then. Do you hear me? I'll keep it here for you. That was Charlie Constable. Was it? They said he'd been killed at Gettysburg. Shot through the head, that's what they said. Oh, but thank God they made a mistake. Thank God he's all right and come home again. <gasps> What's the matter, ma'am? Why are you looking at your hands like that? There's blood. Where? Watch all his cap. It, it's tied to its bedroll and there's blood on it. There's blood on Charlie's camp. Ma'am? Yes? It's Sergeant Baxter, ma'am. Well, I know that. Who else would it be? You finished so soon? I got a feeling for wood. Carving it or chopping it. I got enough cut there so you can at least start the winter. Well, I thank you sincerely. You don't know how much that helps me. No, I, I thank you. I'm obliged for the dinner. <laughs> Such as it was. <laughs> it beats salt pork and hard tack, which is what I've been used to for as long as I can remember. I was hoping you'd play your guitar one more time. Would you? Made this myself. You didn't. You know how to make musical instruments. After a fashion, not as good as the ones I made at home. I had more time then. You have to pick the right tree, a good solid one with character. You cut a branch and strip off the bark and take the wood in layers, but carefully, just right. Then you soak it and bend it into the shape you want. Well, there's plenty to it, believe me. And then after it's dry, it has to be planed and glued and whittled till it's perfect. And then comes the tuning. You know, they say a, a good guitar takes on the voice of the man who made it. If he has a voice to start with, seems some men don't. No matter what they play, it just comes out flat and dead. I'll bet all your guitars sound beautiful, just like this one. My old man used to say that I'd wind up nothing but a bum troubadour. Did he? My old man. But he was a proud one when I marched off. Proud as an old rooster, because his son was going off to war to become a man. And I come back, half a man. That song of yours. Black is the color? Judd, my, my husband, he used to sing that. Oh, I wish you could have met him. I wish so, too. A very gentle man. A very nice and decent man. And I can remember nights he'd sit out on this porch and play and sing. Even the crickets would keep quiet. And the bullfrogs down at the pond. It was just as if they'd stop their noise so they could hear the music. And then the Yankees came. Like blue locusts who had to eat away the trees and the land and everything on it. I owe them for much. For our house, our lawn, our trees, for everything that was. Including my husband's life, I owe them for very much. Ma'am? Hmm? Why don't you leave here? This place is no good for you. This place is all I have. Just an empty shell of an old house and a burned-out field. But it belongs to me, and it's all I've got. You need something else, something different. Being here alone and sick and staring out toward that road, that ain't gonna cure anything. Fever, sadness, heartache. It won't cure nothing at all. What do you suppose happened to it? Your husband? The Yankee who killed my husband. You suppose he's marching home now? Back to his own kin? Do you suppose he's laughing and singing and telling all his neighborhood about the rebels he killed? All the bullets and the heads he shot them through? I don't reckon that at all. You shouldn't either, ma'am. It's been a lifetime of suffering on both sides. I got a gun inside the house. An old shotgun. 
And I keep thinking about how someday, some moment, a Yankee will ride by, and I'll take out that gun, and I'll aim it at him. I'll aim it steady. But first, I'll tell him. I'll tell him that he can consider this the last shot of the Civil War, a bullet in exchange for the one my husband took. You let that kind of poison sit on your mind, you'll die from it, I swear. Who's coming? I can't see yet. It's him. Who do you mean? The Yankee. Well, hold on now. It's a hot night. Hot indeed, Lieutenant. Couldn't see if anyone still lives here. They do. You traveling a long way? Oh, just up the road. But I've been on it a long time. You too, Sergeant? Long time. I've got a half full canteen, but my horse is running dry. Well, there's water in the well. I don't think they'd mind. Much appreciated. Well, I know you, don't I? That's possible. I mean... I mean, I've seen you before. I seem to remember. Go on. What is it you remember? You'd best heed the sergeant's answer because it's the last thing you'll ever hear. No, ma'am. Put the gun down. You don't understand. The last thing you'll hear on this earth. This I promise you. Ma'am, don't shoot him. The lieutenant here tried to save my life. Stand aside. H hear me out first. I was I was lying on the side of a road. A mini ball had landed amongst us and took off my leg. And I laid there bleeding. And then he come by. A patrol of Yanks. And he, he propped me up and he tried to, he tried to stop the bleeding. I remember looking straight at him and saying... I said to him, dang, if you ain't the most changeable breed in the world. First you do your best to kill me, then you call off the war long enough to try and save me. You remember that, Lieutenant? I thought to myself then that if General Lee had many more of your kind, we'd take a lot of lumps before we could lick you. <laughs> well, we sure give you some. Uh, that you did. Lieutenant, this is Lavinia Godwin. You thanked him, Sergeant. Now be so good as to step out of the way so I can thank him for a few other services. Ma'am, the lieutenant here, he stood out on the open road and tended to me while both sides were shooting up a storm over his head. And yet he stayed there and he tried to save my life. I've got this shotgun leveled straight at his head and my hand is steady. I've waited a long time. I aim to blow his head right off his shoulders. This your pleasure, ma'am? And duty. A little bit of both, perhaps. Well, then you'd best get on with it. Ma'am, I can't let you do that. I just can't. You can't stop me with that guitar. I've got the gun. Then I'll stop you with my hands. You'd better stand down, Sergeant. I've got my finger on the trigger. <gasps> and this is for you, Yankee. You could thank God for the darkness. That kept you from committing murder. Hasn't there been enough of that already? I didn't miss him. I couldn't have. I couldn't have missed him! No, ma'am. You couldn't have. But it doesn't make any difference. Not anymore. I remember now. I do remember. They got you that day. They got you in the back while you were kneeling over me. You took a bullet in the back and you fell right over. Yes, I think that's how it happened. You were dead. I remember thinking you were dead. What's going on here? What's going on here? You'll understand. It'll come to you sooner or later. What will? I've got to be moving up the road again. Don't want to ride, do you, Sergeant? She's not the staunchest steed on earth, but she'll carry two. Thank you, but one's enough. As you like. Safe journey, Lieutenant. And to you. I wish you the best, ma'am. I do wish you the best. And this too shall pass. This too shall pass. Wait and see.
I'm sorry I hit you, Sergeant. And your guitar, your, your beautiful guitar, I, I shouldn't have. I, I shouldn't have done that. Please, for, forget it. It's over. Those things he said. What do you suppose he meant? I have an idea, but, but I think we'll know for sure soon enough. Look. On the ground. What? It's wet. When he climbed on his horse, he... He was dripping blood. <gasps> Sergeant! Sergeant Baxter! Ma'am? Would you come in the house, please? Can I help you? Do you hear that, Sergeant? Hear what, ma'am? That's just it. There's... there's no one on the road anymore. They're all gone. Well, they stopped coming during the night. It's been quiet ever since. Real quiet. Why are you carrying your bedroll? And your cap? Are you leaving? Yes, ma'am. I'm leaving. It's time for me. But where will you go? You told me yourself there's no one waiting for you at home. To wherever that road leads. I can tell you where that road leads. Past 50 miles of places like this. Past houses that were burned out and abandoned after the blue coats got finished with them. Burned out yards and crop fields. Some by Union soldiers, some by us. So there'd be no use. Past a few hundred tired, sick people like me. No worse off than I am. Well, that's what I'm telling you. If you're looking for a change of scenery, Sergeant, you won't find it out there. Along that road. Mrs. Godwin, I was up most of the night. I was up and I was thinking about lots of different things, thinking it through. What did you decide? That lieutenant who came by, and, and the shotgun, and the blood on the ground. When he rode off, it seemed like a mystery. Yes, it does. And that young friend of yours, Constable. Charlie Constable. Yeah, with the bloody cap. And then, then before dawn, it came to me. What did? It's kind of... Kind of hard to explain. Please try. It has to do with that... That road out there. And the men who are walking on it. What about them? Last night, after you'd gone to bed, I stood by the gate and I watched as they went by. There was Union soldiers, too. Yankees. Many of them. Some helping our boys. Some of our boys helping them. But all of them moving down the road. Just as if... Just... Just as if what? Just as if that road led someplace where they all had to go. You hear me? Had to. So wherever it leads, Mrs. Godwin, that's where I have to go, too. But why? What I discovered last night, you wouldn't believe. I, I don't understand all of it myself. I, I understand enough to know that that there's a billy club tapping on my good leg, telling me to move on. So I'll take my leave now, ma'am. And I wish you well. I certainly wish you well. Wait. Wait while I make you breakfast. No need for that. I'm not hungry anymore. Uh, some tea, then. Something to drink. I I'll heat water on the stove with the wood you cut. You have some for yourself, ma'am. I've got something stronger put away. There's a bottle. I, I know where it is. Not with all the walking I have to do. A hot bath, then, before you go. Surely you'd like to get cleaned up. Thank you, but I'm all right. Sergeant! Why, why don't you stay on? I need someone around here who can help. I'm just one sick woman alone, and I need someone to help me. I don't think that's a good idea. I, I'd give you half the place. You could take a wife if you like and live here. And half of it would be yours. There's nothing here that could ever belong to me, ma'am. Nothing at all. Why not? If I say it does. And you know something else? There's nothing here for you either. Nothing but a lot of memories. And there's a prescribed period for mourning. Are you going to wear black for the rest of your days? My memory's a lot longer than yours, Sergeant. My hatreds don't die because somebody signed a slip of paper and turned in their sword. I don't think we need to compete when it comes to memories, Mrs. Godwin. I don't mean that. But as to hatreds, I'll concede that you carry yours for a lot longer than me. So you just stay on here and bide your time between some mourning and some hating. 
I've got to take a walk up that road. And while I'm doing it, I'm going to forget about all the yesterdays, and I'm going to start thinking about all the tomorrows instead. What do you think is up that road, Sergeant? A future? A new South, perhaps? Another Confederacy born out of the ashes? What do you think you'll find? I don't know. But I think... I think every man has to find his own end of the road. It's whatever he wants for himself. And every woman, too. What's that? Sounds like my guitar. But it can't be. It's, it's broken. There's a soldier in the yard. He doesn't mean you any harm. It's a Confederate soldier. Why, it's Judd. My Judd, he's finally come home after all. Lavinia? Hello, my dear. Oh, Judd! Judd, Judd, oh, me tell me it's really true. And how fares my darling wife? Oh, I've been, I've been ill, Judd, very ill. Oh, no. But I'll be well again. I'll be well again because you've come home. Because you're alive and by some miracle you've come home to me. It was home, Lavinia. Look around you. It isn't any longer. It's all the hope we've got, Judd. How do you do, Mr. Godwin? Sergeant? I stopped for some water. The old well. It's still good? I'll be moving on now. The sergeant. He's been telling me there's a pot of gold at the end of that road. Has he? And I told him, Judd, and... And now I have to tell you, I... I understand. Understand what? There's nothing at the end of that road except more road. And more places like this. But we can rebuild it all. We can paint it and, and plow up the fields. We can buy seed and we can... Lavinia. Judd, what is it? Sergeant? Yes, sir? Do you know? I think I do, yes. It's easier that way. I'm not sure, but I, I think I do. Goodbye, Mrs. Godwin. Goodbye, Sergeant. I'll no doubt be seeing you farther on. What does he mean? It's time now, Lavinia. Time? We've got to go. Judd, there's no place to go. This is just a stop along the route, Lavinia. A stop? This is home. Home is somewhere else. And you're saying we have to leave? Yes, Lavinia. We have to leave. Oh, you brought your guitar. I'm glad. This isn't mine. It's that sergeant's. But... See? You remember this guitar, Lavinia. It was all broken, wasn't it? And now it's all in one piece again. Why? Why, yes, it was. How did you know? It was broken, but now it's been put together. And it can be played again, and music can come from it. It's sort of like... Sort of like a human being, Lavinia. A bullet comes along, or a cannonball, or a fever... And it breaks our bodies and throws them aside, and they're no use to us anymore. But then, something else comes. What are you saying? With that comes, comes a second chance. Judd, are we... are we? Yes, dearest. My death came at Yellow Tavern with a bullet. Yours came here with the fever. No! <gasps> all those men? All those men are heading to the end of the road. To whatever it is that each of them yearns for. Yearns? To a place or a moment that is their heart's desire. Theirs and theirs alone. Are you ready? I'm alive, Judd. I have to be. I can feel it. I'm alive. And I don't want to leave here. I'm not ready. I don't want to leave here because if I do, if I do, that means I'll have given up. There's nothing to give up anymore, Lavinia. There's nothing at all. Yes, there is. There's the house and the field and the crops we planted that we'll plant again. And the trees and the leaves that rustle when there's a breeze all night long. And, and the livestock to replace. And, and sometime one day, the, the child will have you and me. 
And he'll grow strong and healthy, and, and he'll help you tend the fields, and, and then he'll move on to a life of his own. His life and his children, our grandchildren, and we'll grow old together on the piece of land that's our own. And in that way, life goes on. Oh, there's so much life still left, so much living still in me, I can't give it up. Don't you feel it? If you don't, I have enough for both of us. It's all I ever wanted, to be here with you. I'll see you later on, then, when you've made your peace. I'll wait for you, just as you waited for me. Oh, Judd, please! Please don't leave me! I'm not leaving you, my darling. I told you, I'll meet you at the end of the road, unless... Then you'll come back? You will! You'll find out what I already know. There isn't anything at the end of the road. There isn't anything at all you can't see right here. You'll come back, Judd. I know you will. That's as it may be, but I'll be waiting for you. Judd! Judd, Judd, please come back. Please come back to me. Go after him, my dear. Who? Who are you? Just a fellow traveler. You must be tired. And hard in that... That black suit in that... That tall hat. Odd, isn't it? Passing strange how it doesn't seem to bother me now. I have some water if you like. That would be a most extraordinary kindness. Over here, there's a well. The water's cool and sweet. Here... Drink your fill. Mm. The sweetest I've ever tasted. I know you, don't I, sir? Do you? I'm sure I do. I've seen you, but not in these parts. In town? No, I, I don't think so. Don't worry yourself. Not on my account. But your face and, and that beard. May I tell you something, my dear? Please. Go after him. You must. Oh, but he, he'll be back. I know he will. M but Judd will be back. Wait no longer. There's no reason. He's going someplace that... that you like, I promise you. Someplace where you'll find peace. But... how do you know? How? It's something we learn about death. Something we all come to understand. You see, my dear lady, this road, it isn't the end. It's the beginning. There's peace up there, serenity and freedom for all from anguish. It's whatever you want most, which you have always sought but could not name. You sound so sure. I am. Go to him, my dear. Go to your loving husband. Go there with him. I can see him on the road, can't you? Standing in the sun with his arms outstretched, waiting to receive you. Your face. I know that face. I've seen it in the newspapers. But... But you were shot, sir. I read it. You were shot by an assassin at Ford's Theatre, Washington. But, but, but that's so far from here, how... So far that I can hardly remember. It all falls away, like seeds in the earth. And so now, Mr. President, you're one of the... Yes, my dear. I guess you might say... I guess you might say that I am the final casualty of the Civil War. And now I'm the last man on this road, the very last. I think it only fitting that I be the last of the passers-by. Judd? Is that you? Lavinia. It is. I, I see you. Wait, Judd, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming now. Lavinia Godwin, the mistress of a burned-out home, the image of woman in the aftermath of war, all women in all wars, 
suffering the final wound and the deepest, and now, at last, ready to be healed. Incident on a dirt road during the month of April, 1865. And as we've already pointed out, it's a road that won't be found on any map, but it's only one of many that lead into and out of the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at twilightzoneradio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered, while supplies last, at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. The Passersby, starring Morgan Brittany with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etcheson and based on a script by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Doug James, Jeff Lupiton, Turk Muller, Roderick Peoples, Norm Woodell, Carl Amari, Roger Wolski, Paul Patch, Don Longo, and Lynn Foley. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking.